Grade the U.S. Open for me, Borky. No, no specifics on how it ended. We we, we got to plus unpack that. It was outstanding. I mean, there was a couple of times you, you where, didn't get your carnage. We kind of did get carnage. Yeah, but but not not the whole everybody in the field is. You, I mean, you wanted the winning score to be like plus five. I did, but you know, I, I'm. Th- there was a couple of moments where it felt like the course was a little too much, but at the same time, like when Rory hit it into the native area, what was it, number five or six, where he went for it and two landed on the green, rolled off into the native area, and people were like, "Oh, the the course is that that's too much. The course is gimmicky now." No, everybody in the field knows if you come up short, if you don't hit it in the landing spot on that green, that's a risk you take. The ball rolls off, and if you're in the native area, too bad. Every single player in the field had that in their notes when they started that tournament. He took the risk. He came up short, a couple of paces short. It was a great shot, but that was the risk he took. Ball rolled off the green. That's well, what a great shot. It was a good shot. It was, it was a good, good shot. shot. Good shot. Not a great, great shot, shot if he had hit it two paces farther and it lands in the yeah. effective landing area on the greens, which was like a new thing that we saw this, uh, this weekend on the coverage. Yeah. It's like they would show... Hey, yeah, they would show an overhead shot of the green, and then there was like a like effective putting surface because the greens fell off in every direction all the way around it. So you, you hear sometimes about a false front, like you hit it and it looks like it's deep enough, but it actually falls back if you don't get it deep. It was like that all the way around. So it was like if you hit it too short, it came back. If you hit it too long, it rolled off. Too far left, too far right, it would roll off into kind of – places you didn't want to be all the way around um but yeah the the course was great it it was you you could see the best players in the world struggling but if they hit the right shots they were rewarded and you had two of the biggest names in the sport going back and forth down the back nine with missed putts and missed shots and great shots and drama it was exceptional it was absolutely exceptional the only thing I regret, I wanted Finau to win for some reason. I like Tony Finau, and uh, I thought late Saturday he was going to get a chance, and then that triple where he just went back and forth on the green kind of ended his run there. But that's the only thing that I, I'm disappointed by is for some reason I found myself rooting for Finau, and he played his way out of it. Otherwise, it was everything that you wanted. And he was still kind of there at the end. I mean, he played Tony well on Finau, Sunday. He, he finished his tied for third. Uh, shot a 67 in the final round. That is uh, that is quite good. Uh, Patrick Cantlay had his best finish ever in a major. Bryson DeChambeau is your U.S. Open winner. Six under, what was it, first person to win the U.S. Open in over a decade with a final round score over par. He shoots 71, one over in the final round. Rory McIlroy won this golf tournament, and then he lost it. It's that classic debate, right? Is uh, did one guy win the tournament, or did this team win the game, or did the other team lose the game? Did Bryson win the tournament, or yes. did, or did Rory choke it away? Yes. And uh, Bryson's shot on eighteen is just unbelievable. I mean, just just absolutely unbelievable in that moment in that spot. One of, if not the most difficult shots in the sport, a fifty-yard bunker shot with all the pressure in the world on you, and to knock it to two feet was just, it was special. But that would have just been a footnote had Rory not missed two three-footers coming down the stretch. Uh, so I think the the correct answer is Rory choked, but Bryson, especially how he's played in majors all year, he was good in Augusta, he was really, really good at Valhalla, and then he's a worthy champion. Rory choked. But the champion is is worthy of holding that trophy again. The story surrounding Bryson DeChambeau has changed. It has changed. Three years ago, maybe four years ago, Michael Borky, about three days a week on this radio show, would rail on Bryson DeChambeau. He was stupid the, little hat. He was the worst. And his single-length golf clubs and his spritzing his golf balls on the range. And it's just too quirky, too self-confident, too over-the-top, too combative, all of these things. And Bryson DeChambeau has left the PGA Tour. He has gone to live. 
and he has become more tolerable. Even more than that, he's become incredibly likable. He has generated a massive following via YouTube and probably pretty good revenue associated with it as well. And days like yesterday with him, his ability to promote his YouTube channel, <laughs> um, that, that wealth is growing in real time. We'll talk about the way that it, the way that it ended, the way the last hour of the tournament went. For, for a little while, it was, you take it, no, you take it, no, you take it, no, you take it. And then it was just, well, all right, if you're going to give it to me, let me hit a couple of clutch shots. And zero clutch from Rory. What in the world happened to Rory McIlroy on golf's biggest or second biggest stage yesterday? Rory McIlroy had a two-shot lead over Bryson DeChambeau with four holes to play. Two-shot lead. And he Bryson was played. He was eight under. And Bryson was six under. And Bryson DeChambeau played his final four holes at one over par. And one outright, no playoff. And Rory played his final four holes at three over par with a bogey on 15 where he missed a two and a half foot putt, a bogey on 16 and a bogey on 18 where he missed a four foot putt. And it was Borky. I, I would say if, if you were observing my golf game, especially on the greens and you had to walk away with like, a summary or a criticism or, okay, this is the reason that Richard is not a good putter. Your rationale would be is he cannot consistently make confident strokes. Right? It, whether it's slowing down at impact or getting a little wristy or, or whatever it is, you don't see me stand over a four-footer footer consistently and put a good confidence stroke on it, knock it into the back of the hole, pick it up, walk off, and go to the next hole. And I'm a very average amateur golfer. Have you ever seen a less confident stroke than the tentative whatever that was that Rory put on the ball in 18? Yeah, uh, and... One of the best players in the world can still, I mean, I guess he's a human after all, but what was it, 496 consecutive makes from those distances? In, inside three the... feet. All right, was it inside three feet or inside four? He was 496 of 496 yeah. this season. Hold on, I've got it right here. And the answer to that question, it's, you know, how does that happen? I kept hearing that. How does that happen? How does that happen? It's mental. Yeah, 496 of 496 inside three feet. It's mental. He choked. He's a human being. It happens to people, but that that is 100% mental. It wasn't a misread, nothing. It's mental. He could you could give him 1000 of those putts today and he'd make 1000 in a row. Just boom, 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 boom. It's this far. It's just something in him did not allow him to win that tournament. Yeah. And look, it was a little it was a little slider left to right on 18. That was a tougher one. But if he puts a and I understand that the greens are really that's a left center putt if he puts it firm. You just you don't miss that putt. You just you don't. You don't do it. But he did. And it cost him I mean he he could have uh, there, there's so many narratives about him that would have ended had he made one of those two. Well, he had to make both to win outright, yeah. but so much he can't win anymore. He doesn't have it anymore. The weight of trying to be the face of the tour is is weighing on him and affecting his play. He's been passed. All, all this stuff would have ended had he made him. And that's the third time in a year and a half that Rory has been in contention to win a major and has um, not been able to finish. 
the Open at St. Andrews where Cam Young won it. Yeah, I'm sorry, Cam Smith won it. I guess that was two years ago. And then the U.S. Right. Open last year and the U.S. Open this year. And then Cam Smith did shoot 64 on that Sunday, but it was there for Rory to win. He just didn't play well. Yeah. He didn't hit good shots under pressure. Oh, a lot of people are, are making a lot out of him getting out of Dodge as fast as possible. I, I, I'm kind of waffling about that. On one hand, what's he going to say? What's he going to say to the reporters? What is he going to say? I choked. Okay, we know. Uh, but on the other hand, golf is a sport of decorum. And even if you don't do media, you should have found a way to congratulate Bryson. He did it to Xander a month ago. He's standing on the range, just just hitting drives, hitting drives, hoping Xander misses a putt so he can beat him in a playoff. Bryson played perfect on that Sunday. He lost. What is the first thing he did? He went and found Xander, and then he yeah. left. And I wonder if that was about Rory losing. Yes. Or it was about who he lost to. I agree with you. I thought not congratulating the winner was small. I don't care that he didn't do media. Yeah. Sports talk. 